talking about attaining the standard of God's vision, write down, attaining the standard of God's vision as Christians, attaining the standard. Hallelujah. God is a God of vision, God is a God of standard, God is a God of purpose. And everything he does, he does it according to set out, stipulated um, expectations. Hallelujah. When we talk about living our lives according to God's vision and standard, we are talking about bringing your life to where God wants it to be and how God wants it to be. Praise the name of the Lord. There's so many things that the Bible reveals to us as God's desire, plan, and purpose for our lives. But we will start declaring and unpacking the order and the condition of every person who becomes a Christian. We are going to read the Bible in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse number 17. And then we will then know why God wants what Acts 2.17 should happen. Why does he want that to happen? Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Jesus. It reads as follows. It says, in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women. I will pour out my spirit in those days. And they will prophesy. Now this verse also carries the same idea when you connect it to the book of Ezekiel, Ezekiel 36, verse number 27. It's just that in that rendition of Ezekiel, there is something else that God is saying which is different to what he's saying here in terms of why his vision is to have every woman in the church who tells people she's a Christian and every man in the church who tells people he's a Christian. Why does God want to pour the Holy Spirit upon all of us? Here in Ezekiel 36:27. God says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. The NIV says, I will put my spirit in you. It becomes more personal and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. If we finish this with uh, reading the book of uh, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse number 14 the Bible there speaks something all else there it says uh, you must no longer conform to the pattern of behavior and character and conduct that you used to follow before you became Christians it says now you must be holy in your conduct because the God to whom you now belong is holy I'm sure even a primary school going girl or boy can understand that in all the things we've just read there is a vision. God wants every Christian to line up to this standard. He says, I will pour out my spirit. So write this thing down. God wants every Christian to be Holy Ghost occupied and Holy Ghost controlled. We'll soon find out why. But his vision, his plan is that the moment 
you join a church the moment you come forward to say you are accepting Jesus to be your Lord the vision the standard the expectation of God is that immediately you must experience what is called Holy Ghost occupation it means the Holy Spirit must come into your life immediately he must come into your life to occupy you not just to occupy you so that you pray in tongues and speak in tongues you know and just experience goosebumps no he comes so that after occupying you right down he influences you God wants every genuine born again Christian man and woman to be occupied by the Spirit of God that's why Paul speaks very harsh words in the book of Romans chapter uh, 8 verse number 9 he says whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him hallelujah so the vision of God when God was sitting in heaven he had a vision of men women being gathered together from the four corners of the earth from all nations of the earth as the Bible tells us and this assemble of people must experience a divine invasion in their lives the Holy Spirit must come into their lives the Holy Spirit must enter their lives so that upon the entrance of the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit will begin to influence them because everyone who has now given his or her life to God through Jesus Christ there is a particular standard of life that must be exhibited hallelujah he says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people, all people. I was praying the other day, God said to me, what are those people who are not full of my spirit doing in church? What's their business and mission? I couldn't answer. It was a difficult question. Because I realized it ought not to be so. The vision of God is that every person must be full of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Every person must be occupied by the Holy Spirit. This is not just for worship center. The universal church of Jesus Christ must be a church of men and women who are full of the Holy Spirit. So serious is the matter that on such a day like this, over 2,000 years ago, it was 10 days after Jesus ascended to heaven. On that day, people, the followers of Jesus were in one place in an upper room. Their mobile phones were switched off. They were not talking to the outside well they were waiting for the Holy Spirit to show you how so serious is this requirement of God that is so taken light so ignored even by preachers of the gospel today everyone who becomes a follower of Jesus there must be a divine emblem upon the life of that person write it down there must be a divine emblem just as you see all the cars they've got emblems the Toyota emblem the BMW emblem the Mercedes emblem every person calling himself or herself a Christian they must possess a divine emblem It means no one who becomes a church member or a Christian, no one must rest until they feel and they know Holy Spirit has occupied me. Let me say it again. No one, no one who becomes a Christian, who becomes a member of the church must ever rest until they are sure that the vision of God has been actualized and realized in their lives. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. This is the simple gospel that is supposed to be preached that unfortunately has been complicated by so many of us who preach. And people of God are now Christians without understanding what is expected from me now that I'm a Christian. What a tragedy. And I pray that God would change and help us to line up with his vision. Can you say amen? 
so you can write it down again God wants every person who calls himself a Christian to be occupied immediately by the Holy Spirit and not just to be occupied by the Holy Spirit but to live a life that is under the control of the Holy Spirit that is why we read the Bible in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse number 14 written clearly it says it is those who are led or who are under the control of the Holy Spirit or whose lives are directed by the Holy Spirit who are the sons of God it's not a discriminatory verse but it is talking in line with God's vision no Christian is expected to call herself or himself a Christian without experiencing divine occupancy Holy Spirit must be on the inside of you hallelujah so it must be your cry your prayer every day welcome Holy Spirit Fill me with your presence, anoint me with your power, reign inside of me. It must be your daily cry. Welcome Holy Spirit, fill me with your presence, anoint me with your power, your power, reign inside of me. Spirit, you are welcome. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Fill me with your presence. Fill me with your presence. Yes, Lord. With your power. Anoint me with your power. Your power reign inside of me. Every Christian, every born again man and woman, every church attending men and women should be filled and occupied by the Holy Spirit. Why? Because from the moment you become a Christian you need to undergo moral transformation. Write it down. You need to undergo character alteration. Put simpler. It means there must be a behavioral characteristic overhaul. Am I helping someone? Because we are from another kingdom of darkness. As the Bible says in Colossians 1.13. He has translated us, transported us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. In this kingdom you must undergo a character, moral, disposition transformation. Because now that you are a Christian, Christian, it means you must enroll in a class that will cause you to soon resemble Christ-likeness. Oh, Jesus of Nazareth. You need to enroll in a college of the Holy Ghost so that the Holy Spirit can overhaul. Oh, Jesus. Otherwise, Jesus and God will have Christians who are in the church. They are in the choir, they are in the protocol, they are pastors. Some of them are serving in different departments, but they have got crooked characters. It becomes a shame to him. That's why in this Ezekiel 36, 27, it's clear. I'm going to simplify it for you. Before we read 27, 26 says, I will take out the stony heart, the bad heart, the corrupt heart. You see, 25 says, I will wash you with water and shall, you shall be clean. That is water baptism. 26 says, after you are baptized, there must be a divine surgery. Your heart must be changed. Because you can't call yourself a follower of my Jesus, yet your life does not resemble or reflect the Jesus character. This is making sense, huh? Eh? 
It's really flowing. Are, are you understanding? So he says, I'll put my spirit in them. We're in 27 now recapping Ezekiel 36. I will put my spirit in you, in you. So it means everyone must have the spirit of God in her, in him, and in me. No, say in me. Say, Holy Spirit, you have to be in me. You are designed to occupy me now that I'm a child of God. I'll put my spirit in you. Going to Acts 2.17, it shall come to pass in the last days. Which days? These days. Say yet, God, not a preacher, that I will put my spirit upon all human beings. And then Ezekiel tells us why God wants the Holy Spirit to be in us. So that we can be, write it down, we can be forever under his control and influence in order to live God-pleasing lives that will translate us to heaven when we die. Jesus of Nazareth. You turn on television, the preaching you hear is just people being motivated. They are not even told how they ought to live their lives in the today and how they ought to position themselves so that should they die today, they proceed to heaven without hassles. What a tragedy. Say, Lord, help us. <laughs> Say, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God, if you read the two scriptures, when he says, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, young men, young women shall prophesy and they shall see visions. Oh my God. And he says, old men shall dream dreams. And then he says, I will pour my spirit in the last day, says God, upon all men and upon all women and they shall prophesy. What are we learning? What do we deduce from this talk? God wants every Christian, write it down. He wants every man, every woman who comes to church, call himself or herself a Christian, call himself or herself a follower of Jesus, call himself or herself a child of God, to be continuously under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit comes to superimpose the God nature and God character upon us so that we live our lives in a God pleasing way. Can you say amen? Write this statement down. So, Holy Ghost control, or let me put it like this you need and I need the Holy Ghost continuous occupation continuous influence or control depending which word you want to choose continuous empowerment so that I successfully live a holy life that pleases God and so that I'm empowered to effectively do ministry need you need even those watching on television it's a standard of God it's a requirement of heaven is the vision of God it is the desire of God he wants every child of God every man woman every Christian everyone who comes to church regular to to translate to to upgrade from being just a Sunday church attender but you must be a man a woman who is occupied by the Holy Spirit controlled by by the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit so that you live an upright life, holy life, Holy Spirit for holy living. Write it down, Holy Spirit for holy living. You can't do it by your own power. Many Christians get into scandals upon scandals. Can you imagine? Scandals upon scandals. They involve themselves in things that the Bible says should not even be mentioned in church that so and so is drinking. So and so is sleeping with someone who they are not married to. It says it must not even be mentioned because that is so, so, so low. It, the standard of God is higher than that thing. The Bible says it must not even be talked about because it's not even expected to happen. How? Because God has a standard. 
So when you look, you look at many Christians, they are serving a God, singing about a God who never directs their lives. Because walking with God is not a mind game. It's not a human ability game. It's a Holy Ghost empowerment game. I will repeat the statement so that it sinks. Every Christian, you, I'm talking about you, you must be occupied by the Holy Spirit, occupied by Him. You must be influenced by Him, ruled by Him. You must be anointed, empowered by Him. So that by His empowerment, by His influence, you become a very upright woman, a very upright brother. So that the vision of God that's recorded in Philippians 2, 15, 16 can be realized. In Philippians 2, 15, the Bible says, you need to shine as lights in the midst of this perverse and crooked generation. As God's harmless children. So you see, when you are a Christian, you are expected, if you are 40 students in the class, as a Christian student, you are expected to be different. You are 40 ladies working in a government ministry, in a government office, you are 20. You must be different in the department. Hey, Jesus of Nazareth. In your family, you are born again. You have five siblings. You are number three. Number three, different one. Shine. If this vision of God is not realized, it doesn't happen. God is crying. Because what will happen is that there will be people who profess to be children of God. They tell others they are Christians. They tell others they are going to worship center or to whatever church. But their lives, behavior, conduct is an embarrassment. Jesus have mercy. Lift up your hand. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill my life, Lord, with your presence. You are welcome in my life. You are welcome. You tells us that we need to no longer conduct ourselves the way we used to be or we used to before we came to Jesus. It says we must be holy in our conduct. When you get born again, the blood of Jesus washes you. You become morally, you become positionally holy. But to be literally holy in your physical body, in your walk, in your behavior, the Holy Spirit has to work that out over time. That's why the verse is very clear. It says, be holy in all your conduct. What is conduct? The way you behave, the way you talk, your attitude your disposition it means there must be no people who, who live with you who interact with you who keep on doubting whether you are truly a Christian <laughs> there must be no people who keep on doubting whether you are because the verses told us you are the light of the world let your light so shine before men so that when they see your good works your good conduct character they will glorify God welcome Holy Spirit sing it with all your heart fill me with your presence my God anoint me with your power your power 
listen to me as long as we don't bring our lives under holy ghost control holy ghost empowerment we shall continue to struggle in life though we are christians we shall continue to fail in life though we are christians we shall continue to be disappointed in life though we are christians we shall continue to falter in our walk with god though we love god we shall continue to be defeated because the plan of God says every Christian, write it down, the plan of God says every Christian must have a daily Holy Ghost aid. Every Christian must enjoy a Holy Ghost aid. Because the standard of God is too high for the human being. So that's why God brought the Holy Spirit. So that Holy Spirit can bring that new capacity and ability to live your life in a way that pleases our Master. Say thank you, Father. Say thank you, Almighty God. And write this statement down. The only way by which we will conquer these conditions I just mentioned is by letting ourselves. I will speak this one slow. I must let myself, you must let yourself come under the control of the Holy Spirit. You will not have any problem conquering that addiction to anything which is sinful. You will not be a victim of sinful addictions because the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse number 13, we mortify, we kill, we subdue the cravings of this body, craving for something, wanting to do something which is sinful. You put it under control with the aid of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. By the spirit we mortify, we put to death the works of the flesh. Can you say amen? Another amen. So the climax of this vision is that when we gather on Sunday, we must not have Christians who are sitting in the pew like they are lost. Everyone must be on fire because the Holy Ghost has come. The word is going forth. A, a whole Christian is yawning. <sighs> Want to sleep. No. You've got to be vibrant. Alive. Fueled by the Holy Spirit. Paul talking about this vision of God in the book of Ephesians 5.18. He likens the Holy Spirit to alcohol. He says don't be drunk with wine but be filled with the spirit so that you can make psalms melodies singing unto the lord so when you come to church even before the worshipers and the praise team start singing you are coming with your own song you are in the spirit you are together with the holy ghost oh my god i pray may this religion be eliminated in the church father deliver me from coming to church without ever enjoying intimacy with the holy spirit pray open your mouth and pray because if the trumpet will to sound tomorrow what will happen to you if tomorrow the trumpet can sound and say Christians are going, do you think you'd go without the fuel? An aeroplane does not lift up without jet fuel. The fuel of the believer that will ensure that you take off is the Holy Ghost in you. He'll guarantee our trans translation from this realm to the next realm. So it's not something that you can just, it's not optional, you must have it. You must have the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth and pray. La pra kapazatabaya. Lembra kapazatabaya. Lepra kapazete baba yende. 
You will face struggles, my dear. You will face setbacks, disappointments, your life. Many people call me, they say, Pastor, my life is experiencing stagnation. You cannot be Holy Ghost filled and experience stagnation. It's not possible. Hallelujah. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, He's the Spirit of speed. He's the Spirit of results. He's the Spirit of achievement. He's the Spirit of victorious living. Are you understanding me? La pota kapaya. So you need to be hungry listen to me let me stop your praying so according to the words of Paul he says in Ephesians 5 18 be filled with the Holy Spirit let's take it deeper deeper Papa let's take it deeper he was saying be intoxicated it means it must be evident and visible how come you feel so many nasty things in your life, in your body? Even when you sleep, you experience so many nasty things. Why don't you experience the Holy Ghost? This is the prayer you need to pray. It will not be something that will happen instantaneous. You've got to do it like habitually. Because it's a new walk, it's a new foundation, it's a new, it's a new setup. You are a process. Some of the habits that you are fighting, you are battling with now, you accumulated them, acquired them, learned them over years. So Holy Spirit must bring a new culture of holy living. It will not be overnight. That's why you need an enrollment. You must, be en you must enroll in the school of the Holy Ghost. Let's pray. Open your mouth and pray. We are shining stars. We are like Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Your Christ that I don't want to embarrass this Jesus who secured for me this salvation in a very painful way. Why should I embarrass him? Why should I embarrass Jesus, Holy Spirit, Gosiam? Why should I embarrass the church? In the way I conduct myself, the way I behave, those who know me that I go to church, what will they think about church and about Jesus? They will think church is a place where people just go to hide, where they just go to show off. Oh my God, what a tragedy that would be to the Jesus who paid with his life for the church to exist. Pray and say, Lord, by your spirit rule in my life. Lambra kapaza, limbro kapazete babaya. Oh my God, pray, speak to God, speak to God. Because I believe today there must be a turning point in everyone's life. Everyone will begin a new pursuit, a new pursuit, a new pursuit. Not just this cheap going to church on Sunday, but people who go to church on Sunday from today. My desire and the desire of God is that there must be men and women who are on a pursuit. They are pursuing that life, the life of being led by the Spirit, controlled by the Spirit, directed by the Spirit, empowered by the Spirit to live holy lives and effectively serve God. Not a bunch of Christians who are all over the world forever looking for someone to pray for them. We have the Holy Spirit facilitated by heaven to cause us to become effective men and women effective in conquering all the challenges of this life conquering even the sinful habits through our determination and the help of the Holy Spirit conquering all sinful habits conquering demonic evil powers even conquering the general challenges of life of life because we are not on our own we are together with the Holy Spirit and his office is called the office of the helper lift up your right and say help me lord to line up with your vision help me my god to become that which you purposed me to become help my life and my character and my conduct and my disposition to come to where you want it to be may i become that you want me to be without further delay in the name of Jesus, say, Holy Spirit, take complete control of my life. Say, as I go out of the service, Holy Spirit, lead me, control me.
direct me holy spirit help me to live to showcase a holy life because of your holy control in jesus name amen hallelujah hallelujah you are here